What is going on guys? It's Suck and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. Also, if you are interested in hearing my take on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of when I upload that video. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So let's start this review by talking about what comes included with the MacBook Pro. Included is a 61 watt USB-C charger, which will get the MacBook from zero to 80% in just under two hours, with the remaining 20% taking around another two hours to complete a full charge. I think we've now gotten to the stage where Apple needs to implement some variant of fast charging on its MacBook lineup, as it's an area where competitors are working on, but battery life on this MacBook Pro on average is closer to around eight hours with a light mix of photo editing, web browsing, video streaming, and the odd document production. So these MacBook Pro models start off with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core Intel i5 processor, which is a sizable jump up from the dual core found in the model this MacBook Pro replaces. However, if you did require more power than using the configurator on Apple's website, you could configure this machine to have a Intel quad core i7 processor with either base speeds of 1.7 or 2.8 gigahertz with a maximum turbo speed of up to 4.7 gigahertz. Now, of course, in theory, this machine can go up to 3.9 gigahertz, but at the end of the day, you'll almost never hit that speed for a sustained amount of time. Now, the reason behind that is, of course, the design of the chassis. Now, yes, if Apple had put more thought into the cooling, then yeah, you'd hit higher speeds, but this machine doesn't thermal throttle itself because it does stay above the base speed. But in terms of being able to hit the maximum turbo speed, you'll almost never hit that, especially, like I say, for a sustained amount of time. Also a standard on this machine, you get eight gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM, which is running at a speed of 2133 megahertz. Now, if you guys are interested in seeing a video in which I benchmarked this MacBook Pro against the previous model, which this one replaces, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner to go and check out that video. But moving on to the graphics, with this model in particular, you get the Intel Iris Plus 645 graphics. And once again, if you was to customize or go for a different model, you could get the Intel Iris Plus 655 graphics. So yes, that of course means that you won't be seeing any dedicated graphics cards in any of the 13 inch models, not currently as they're only available in the 15 inch and now 16 inch models. But if you wanted to run the odd game here or there, then you could quite possibly do so. If you'd like to see more on that, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner, or you could look for links down below in the description to go check out a video I uploaded, which goes over playing games on this MacBook Pro. But if you did want to run the odd game here or there, then you shouldn't run into too much resistance, as long as you lower the resolution and the graphics details. So let's talk about the display on the new MacBook Pro. It's an IPS LED display, which has a diagonal screen size of 13.3 inches, with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It can get fairly bright at around 500 nits and it can display colors in the P3 color spectrum. This display also uses Apple's True Tone technology, which was first launched on the 9.7 inch iPad Pro and has since made its way to iPhones and now the MacBook Pro. It uses sensors to map out the lighting conditions of the environment in which the device is placed and then it will adapt the temperature of the display accordingly. I've also found that on the new MacBook Pro, there is very minimal levels of backlight bleed, which is not only a good thing for photographers and video editors, but it also makes viewing content a pleasant experience, as black levels are good considering it's an LED display, making everything a little more vibrant and giving more contrast. Taking a look at the design, it has the familiar unibody enclosure introduced almost a decade ago, whilst following the same design language, which began in 2016, when Apple redesigned the MacBook Pro lineup with USB-C ports and the touch bar. With this MacBook Pro, 
you get two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side of the MacBook. Now, while you can do so much with one single Thunderbolt 3 port from daisy chaining multiple displays together, connecting multiple hard drives, and also allowing the machine to charge, I would have loved, honestly, to have seen one on either side of the machine making it easier when you've got hard drives microphones or if you just need to charge the machine but you don't want to route the cable to the other side of the machine i mean what can i say i'm just a guy that likes options the keyboards on the macbook personally haven't caused myself any issue I haven't had an issue with the keys being sticky or being stuck due to debris, unlike other YouTubers, but that's not to say that this isn't an issue. I mean, else Apple would not have launched the keyboard replacement program, but do keep this in mind that I am still someone who uses the original 12 inch MacBook, which had the first generation butterfly keyboard. And to this day, I've still not had any issue. Talking of the keyboard, just above the keyboard, you'll find the touch bar with touch ID. The thing is you'll either love or hate it. Myself, I find that it has more uses than you'll think of at first. And since using it on the original 2016 model, I find myself using it in place of some keyboard shortcuts. For example, taking screenshots in Mac OS, as this requires three different keys, whereas I have a macro on the touch bar assigned just for taking screenshots. It just makes those tedious tasks a lot less tedious. And I personally would rather this than a touchscreen on the main display as the only thing I end up using the touchscreen on most Windows machines for is scrolling and maybe pinching into zoom. It's not something I would kill for, especially when you have such a good trackpad. But the touch bar's definitely got its uses for myself. So if you don't adapt your workflow to include it, you'll never use it and in turn you'll think it's useless. The trackpad is honestly the bread and butter of all MacBooks ever since Apple introduced us to it on the MacBook Pro back in 2015. The glass surface is an amazing and effortless way of interacting with macOS and getting tasks complete, be it scrolling through a document, scrubbing through a video timeline. The trackpad on the MacBook Pro is a massive plus and you honestly have to experience it yourself and then you'll understand. So this is of course a MacBook, which means the speakers sound great. How great? Well, take a quick listen to this. There's not much to say about the speakers in the new MacBook Pro. They're MacBook speakers, which means they sound great. Now every year, I'm not sure how Apple is able to make these devices sound much better while packing them with more technology and advancements in such a form factor. Yes, they get quite loud. Yes, they've got a decent amount of audio separation. And yes, they've also got a surprisingly good amount of low end. All things considered, they're a solid A. The webcam, or as Apple like it to be called, the FaceTime HD camera is just about HD. And I'll be honest with you, it's not the strong point on this machine and those before it. I really wish Apple put a full HD webcam in their professional grade of MacBooks. I mean, does that not just make sense? Yes, you have a webcam, but it's not the best. But when you're in a pinch, it will suffice. So we've talked about the hardware out the way. Let's get into talking about the software, Mac OS. Now, Mac OS keeps going from strength to strength. With Mojave, we had features such as dark mode, desktop stacks, and the ability to see all file metadata from within the finder. And my personal favorite, continuity camera, which enables you to use the camera from an iPhone and automatically transfer an image straight to the Mac, which personally is a godsend for some of my workflows, as it allows me to save even more time than I would have using AirDrop. 
In macOS Catalina, we have new features such as Sidecar and the abilities it will bring when paired to an iPad running iPad OS. There is also an updated Find My application, which means if your MacBook was to ever get stolen or misplaced, you could still find it as it would emit a signal to nearby iPhones, even if those devices were turned off or not your own. There are also multiple redesigns to applications such as Photos, Reminders and others. With new features coming to Maps, the Mac just keeps on getting better. The one thing which cannot be overlooked is the software support that you get when purchasing a MacBook. For many years into the future, you will get features, bug fixes and security updates which not only increases the lifespan of the machine but it will also increase the resale value when compared to other Windows machines of similar price and spec. So in short, I think this is a worthy upgrade for anyone who's been holding on to pre-2016 models, which had the HDMI port alongside the more traditional USB-A ports. This is as you get a lot of features from the 40 gigabit per second transfer speeds of Thunderbolt 3, which means you could connect up to two 4K displays, both running at 60 Hertz. Not to mention you get all the benefits of the T2 security chip which will encrypt the SSD and is responsible for the fingerprint data stored on the machine. You also get the touch bar which depending on how it's used, it could make the machine even more versatile and convenient to use. As I said, I wish you got a better webcam for the money as there are a lot of other Windows laptops which give better quality video and images. If this is the first time you're looking into purchasing a MacBook, then I feel you won't be disappointed by purchasing this model as you'll more than likely get software updates and support going deep into the next decade. If that be security updates or features as the latest version of macOS Catalina is still supporting the 2012 MacBook Pro. The new butterfly keyboard so far hasn't displayed any issues or signs of deterioration, which is good. But even if something goes wrong with it, Apple are covering you with the replacement program, which can be a sigh of relief. Although this shouldn't be an issue, especially when you consider how much you're spending on this MacBook. It's a MacBook, which means great build quality, excellent support and great software included. A superb color accurate display in which you cannot see the individual pixels, an industry leading trackpad, a keyboard which is overshadowed by its past incarnations, an awesome battery life with an amazing cost to performance. I'll stop there but I think Apple have really hit this particular model out the park as you get features such as the touch bar and the quad core processor with better graphics, which had previously been reserved for the 1799 model. And that's not to mention that these particular MacBook Pro models are always on sale. And if you want to get the best price, I will leave links down below in the description for you to go check out those prices. So that has been it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to hit the like button. And if you've got any friends that are looking into purchasing this MacBook Pro, then be sure to share it with them. Also, if you are new around here, then why not subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of when I upload my next video. If you have got any questions with what you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section. Alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media links to which can always be found down below in the description section. Also, while you're down there, you'll find links to purchase this MacBook Pro. Once again, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.